Hola amigos de Mi Arrecife, nos encontramos en un stand especial, no quería irme de Magna sin hacer esta entrevista, una entrevista que está relacionada con la microfauna que tanto les he hablado a ustedes en diver, diferentes eh, de mi, videos. Me encuentro en el stand de eh, Algie Barn y conmigo me acompaña Sean. Yes. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. Eh, which is the history of Algie Barn? Yes, so Algie Barn really started when I was in uh, university. It was, I'm studying chemical and biological engineering. And it was something that I could apply both to my fish tank as well as to my studies. There's a lot of useful things that you can use phytoplankton for or microalgae uh, in human health, in food, in a lot of different things. And I also saw all the benefits it could have in a marine aquarium. Okay. So what I was kind of doing was I drove like three hours to get my first culture. I didn't have a lot of money in college. Uh, I found some guy on Craigslist and essentially went there, got my first culture, started using it in my tank, worked really, really well. I had a hard time finding a lot of live foods available. And so I started culturing that. I was part of the local club in Denver, Colorado and started selling it to a couple people there, giving away some samples. A lot of people really liked it. And, you know, I was able to kind of turn that into a much bigger kind of, uh, kind of business and offering for the community. And I had a lot of people that were like, okay, we really like the phytoplankton, but what's next? What are you doing? Was reading a lot, a lot about the benefits of copepods, mm -hmm. which is like our 5280 blend. And so I started culturing those guys. Again, I found some local breeder that had a culture. He really helped me out, uh, helped teach me a little bit about culturing them. And then, you know, it kind of grew from there. We started finding some local fish stores. And I met some of my uh, business partners there. Uh, one of them worked at like a fish store for a while. And he really wanted to do a lot of like the marketing and everything like that while I focused on production. And that was back in 2014. And then, you know, I worked another job while I was still doing this. Okay. And about uh, a little bit more than a year ago, I was able to quit my job doing technical ceramics uh, and go full time into Algae Barn. And we've been doing really well, we're growing. Uh, we just moved into a new 11,000 square foot facility and uh, we're just growing, 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 and we're looking for the next thing, mm -hmm. so. Okay, fantastic. Vamos a hacerle una pregunta a Shem sobre la importancia, según la perspectiva de él, sobre lo que es el fito y el zooplancton en el acuario. Shem, in your opinion, yeah. why is so important to have a good colony of phyto and zooplankton in our aquariums? So the reason why it's so important is because bacteria and phytoplankton make up the basic trophic or the basic food layer of the ocean. Really everything gets its energy from those levels and it just works up the food chain. So first you have the phytoplankton and then the next level you have the copepods, the zooplankton and then the fish eat the zooplankton and it kind of works its way through there. So like all the omega-3 fatty acids come from phytoplankton mm -hmm. and then work their way up the food chain. So you really need to establish the base of the pyramid or the really good foundation and then that helps you build a sustainable ecosystem in your tank because it's not very natural what we're doing in a fish tank. We're kind of taking things, we're like, okay, we need some rock, that's similar, we need some salt water, that's similar. Uh, but really, if you try, it's like building a house without the foundation, mm -hmm. and you need to have a really good foundation. So what we're trying to do here, and it's also with like the macroalgae, like the catomorpha that we sell, uh, it's very, very clean. That's one of our claims to fame, is we grow it very cleanly. Uh, but that helps complete the natural cycle in the aquarium, where like the fish poop and all the decay kind of gets sucked up by the seaweed. Mm -hmm. And then it's a very natural way of producing your nitrates, phosphates, and kind of dealing with uh, some of the nuisances that come with having a fish tank, of having to scrub it and clean it, 
This way it's very natural and you don't have to do as much. You don't have to be in your tank as much. You can more watch and enjoy it. Ok, vamos a hacerle ahora otra pregunta que está relacionada con los diferentes valores nutricionales que podemos encontrar tanto en el fitoplancton como en el zooplancton. Y cómo nosotros como acuaristas deberíamos de tener, eh, cuál criterio deberíamos de tener para utilizar uno u otro o, o varios. Sham, there is different uh, nutritional values in zooplancton and phytoplankton. Some has more uh, proteins, other has less. Which recommendation can you give to the reefer in order to know which phyto or zooplankton have to use or ideal yeah. uh, of a mix mm -hmm. of phyto and zooplankton? So really, it's a very good question. And so a lot of these different, like the phytoplankton, uh, the different species, they all have different levels of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. They all have different levels of amino acids. And so we try and take a lot of that complication out, which is why we focus mainly in blends of phytoplankton and blends in zooplankton, okay. like the phytoplankton. Can you tell me about your products? Yeah, yeah. so the Ocean Magic, uh, we have four species. Uh, phytoplankton in here. We have nanochloropsis, which is really high in omega-3 fatty acids, really high in EPA. Uh, then we have our isochrysis, which is like a brown algae. Uh, it's really high in DHA, and it's really good. It's really nutritious, really easy for cells to digest. Uh, then we have our tetracellumness, which is a bigger cell, and that one's also high in EPA. And then we have our thalassoraceae, which is a diatom, which helps suck up some silicates from your water so you don't get the diatom blooms that are negative for that. So we really tried to encompass a large range of different phytoplanktons to give you one product that kind of fits the need. Because if you need six different products, you're not going to keep up with the regimen and it's not going to give you the desired results. And then same thing with the 5280 pods, that we have three species of copepods in, or zooplankton. So we have the Tigriopus, Tisby, and Apocyclops. They all have different ecological niches. Some like the glass more, some like the water column more, some like the gravels and rocks. So really we try and simplify that process and just give you one product that kind of fits the bill for everything. Bueno, mis amigos, creo que hemos recibido una buena explicación de la importancia, donde en la medida que podemos aditar fitoplancton, ese fitoplancton va a incorporar al zooplancton esos valores nutricionales y posteriormente sean nuestros peces o nuestros colares, al tomar o alimentarse del zooplancton van a su vez a incorporar estos valores nutricionales. Muchas gracias por estar en este nuevo episodio de mi arrecife thank you so much thank Jeff you, thank you. you're welcome y espero que nos podamos ver en un siguiente capítulo de entrega de información de mi arrecife como siempre les digo me despido diciéndoles que sus acuarios se encuentren mejor cada día hasta luego